Thank you very much for speaking to us uh, at ANN7. How has your trip to South Africa been so far? Well, it's been busy. Um, we, we land, we have meetings, and now we have interviews. And uh, But obviously really excited about the build-up to Saturday's uh, big fan event. What do you think makes the Premier League so attractive to countries outside Europe? Well, there's only one answer to that. It's the players and the teams that we have. Um, fundamentally, we put on the best possible show, and our clubs have always tried and strived. They've never given up trying to just be marginally better, bring in the best talent, bring in world talent, including, as you know, you know, talent from South Africa uh, um, over time. And what they do is they put on the best possible show. And people now in a global world mm -hmm. watch a lot of stuff from around the world and they go, no, I like that. You know, and they can see, look at football generally and they look at what we do and they go, yeah, that really is, you know, exciting, it's passionate, um, it's, uh, it's uh, everything they really want um, in football and therefore that's why we're, I think, so popular. You talk about uh, the talent that obviously mm. comes from South Africa and Africa's one of the biggest exporter of mm -hmm. players. How does uh, the Premier League actually view South African football as a whole? Well, again, you know, African football has certainly developed and 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 and, and, uh, and come on, but as has, has as has everybody's football, and of course, you know, you can't. It's hard to know what you measure a continent's football success by. Is it by your performance in World Cups or, you know, championships? Who knows? I mean, if you were judging English football by maybe England's success in the World Cup, you wouldn't necessarily think we'd done much better than some of the African nations. And so that's a difficult measure because it's a knockout competition. But you've got to look at participation. You've got to look at the quality. You've got to do, come up with other measures, and we look at African football, and it's undoubtedly, you know, on the on on the rise, and has been, you know, for decades, for absolute decades. And you do get peaks of interest when suddenly somebody gets through to the World Cup and does well in a World Cup, and as South Africa have done, as Cameroon have done, as Nigeria have done in various World Cups. But uh, but anyway, we we see that the whole the whole African football uh, development is is encouraging. Um, the investment is now going into grassroots football. The you know the important investment that uh, goes in because you've got to build it on a very solid solid pyramid. But uh, no, we're, we're, it's very interesting what's happening in African football generally. Talking about development and obviously talent identification, talent development. Mm. Will the Premier League have a long-term plan with South Africa? Will they sort of invest uh, some time, some facilities in the country to help develop the game? Um, well, that's a very interesting one because we're always open to that discussion and we are in discussions with the South African Football Association about what sort of relationship we have. We have uh, relationships with various confederations around the world and national associations, uh, the, Af the, um, the, the Asian Football Confederation, we have a, a, a cooperation agreement with them. We are very willing, we are, you know, we're here this week, we have actually one of our coaching programmes taking place which is in, in cooperation with uh, mm -hmm. the South African Development uh, Association. Um, our Premier Skills programme which is English coaches coming over, coaching coaches. There's no point in us coming over to coach players because there's so many players and not enough coaches. But if we can coach coaches, they can then go on and coach. And extensions and expansions of those programs, yeah, we're certainly up for and we'll be looking to do more of those. If the South African Football Association is willing and wants that sort of input from us, we would do that. We consider the PSL to be the biggest league in Africa and confidently so. What can the local league maybe take from the Premier League and what you've seen so far? To build it as a brand and to build it as to be as popular yeah. probably on the continent. Yeah, I don't think that's really for me to say. It's very difficult. I don't go around the world telling other leagues, you know, what they should or shouldn't <laughs> do any more than you know. I would hope that they wouldn't be doing that to me either. <laughs> um, but I respect them a lot for what they do. They do a very good job and they do a very good thing. And all I would ever say to anybody is stick to the things that are the most important and you know focus. And what we focus on is putting on the best possible show that you can make sure that it's accessible to as many fans as can, can, can be accessible to, make sure it's safe, make sure it's a safe environment. And if you go on doing that, then you kind of then, whatever commercial revenues you can generate as a result of that success, reinvest it back in. You know, we don't have many profit-taking uh, entities in the Premier League. Mm -hmm. Our clubs reinvest back in talent, and that creates a better possible show. And I think you've just got to stick focused on, on what you do. And uh, as I say, that's not anything that directly specifically aimed at the uh, at the, at the Premier League here. It's just a general piece of advice I give to anybody in terms of uh, keeping their league, you know, striving to be as good as it can be. We touched on the development of coaches. Uh, one of the things that we've seen in the past couple of weeks, uh, especially in the PSL, um, the South African Absolute Premiership League, is referees making questionable calls. Um, and that's something that we've been trying to work on over the past few years. Mm. What kind of examples or what have you done as the Premier League to, to help the process in developing referees or maybe introducing technology to make sure that they get the calls right? Well, the first obvious thing is we've introduced goal line technology, which is on, I think 15 times, 16 times this season now has actually uh, 
come into play and has been needed to help make the decision. We invest an awful lot in training and development of referees and we get them together on a frequent basis. They are extremely well managed, they're extremely well monitored, they're critiqued, they're assessed, they have sports psychologists, they have masseurs, they have physiotherapists, they are, they are a completely different professional level of professionalism um, than they were the generation before them. And that's, uh, you can't stop investing in that. It's the most important thing, the integrity of the competition, the quality of referees, the quality of decision making, and that's what it's about. It, is, it isn't about whether they're, you know, they're tall, they're short, they're round, they're thin. It doesn't actually matter. Are they in the right place, at the right time, making the right decisions? Let's look at this season. Um, how much does the fact that the defending champions are obviously seventh on the log affect the stocks? Does it make it that much more interesting? Do more people watch the game? It's hard to tell. Um, there's two di distinctly different types of interest. Mm -hmm. There's people whose interest is excited when it's very competitive and anybody can win. But then there's also interest that's generated when your biggest ever club is winning. So Man United winning generates huge interest of one sort. Man United not winning and somebody else winning generates interest of a different sort. It's very hard to tell which is, which is more um, interesting. All I know is it's a very exciting season. We said in the close season we thought it would be great, there will be change. Mm -hmm. And my word, there's been more change than you can ever imagine. It isn't just the Man United story, is it? You know, it's obviously Chelsea and Man City we knew would be competitive. Liverpool, I think, have surprised everybody with their level of competitiveness, as of Arsenal, really. And with Everton doing extremely well, post, uh, post David Moyes, it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great story. Are you allowed to support a team? Yes, of course, but not a Premier League team. I'm <laughs> Bristol City, they play in League One. And they're struggling a little bit, although we've had a nice run. We're going to stay in League One, but we're not going to be in the Premier League for any time soon. Thank you very much for speaking to us, and hopefully we'll see you soon in South yeah, Africa. Thank again. you. Thanks.